this problem is filled with calculus too. And where to find the um, the value um, using the inverse function evaluated at x equals b. Well, let's talk a little bit about inverse functions beforehand. Okay. A function, if you use x as the input, y is typically used as the output. So for an inverse function, it would have that y is the input and x would be the output. Okay. So in a invert in, in the original function, x is input. In the inverse function, y is the input. Well, here they're saying we're using the inverse function. So we're using the inverse function using b. Well, if b is the inverse function, input, uh, let's say the output is going to be a. Then to reverse this, the original function would use a as the input and b as the output. Okay, so that's the interpretation. Um, this b would be an input for the inverse, but it will be an output for the original function. Furthermore, um, the derivative of the inverse function is this. Here's the inverse function right there. And then the input of it would be b. And then you take the derivative. There's a formula that says we can get the same answer by using, instead of the inverse function, we can use 1 over the original function with a as the input and, then the, and the derivative of that. Same exact answer. So this uses the original, whereas this uses the inverse. And we were only given the original function and not the inverse. So we're going to use this right here. This requires a. a is, got, is, um, is the input needed to get b. So if b is 1, that's the output. So that's 1 equals x cubed plus 2x plus 1. a will be the um, x that's needed to make all of this equal to 1, or the input. All right, so we'll subtract 1 from both sides. We'll get 0 equals x cubed plus 2x. And it's still solving for x. Let's uh, factor out the x here. We'll get 0 equals x times x squared plus 2x. Now this factor right here cannot be solved for x. I'm sorry, it cannot be solved for 0. Okay, um, 0 is not in the range of this function here. But I can solve this x for 0. So we have x equals 0. Well, that is my a. That's my a term. So my function which says I need, I can find this by finding 1 over the derivative of using a. This suggests that I need a derivative, which will be um, 3x squared, the derivative of the original function, 3x squared plus 2. And then we'll put the um, a in there, which is 0, and we'll get 2. All right, so we know the value of this is 2. So the, this evaluates at 1 over 2, and that's your final answer. All right. Let's take a look at the um, next one. Same idea behind this one. <clears throat> 2 is the output for this function. The question is, we don't know the input, okay? Um, the a that it takes to get this. So we'll put 2 here equals x cubed plus 3 sine of x plus 2 cosine of x. Now, solving for x here is pretty nasty. We're going to um, invoke some help from our graphing calculator. Okay, and there it is. Okay, let's go to y1. Let's put in x cubed, let's see, math 3, and then plus 3 sine x, close parenthesis, plus 2 cosine, uh, where's the x, close parenthesis. Okay, that's my first equation. Then we're going to put another equation equal to 2. We want to find out where these two equations meet. So let's graph. Okay, here you can see the um, x cubed function right there. And soon should be the 2. Oh, yeah, there you go. Y equals 2. And they meet around right there. So I want to find the intersection. So let's hit second function, calculate. Go down to intersect. Hit enter. First curve. That's my first curve. Second curve is y equals 2. Um, guess, of course. And what I have is 0, 2. So 0, 2 means that um, the input is 0, the output is 2. So this implies a 
equals zero. All right, so that solves for that. Now, I need to find one over the um, derivative of the function, it should be g here, of um, a, in this case, that'll be two. So the derivative of the function with respect to x will be three x squared plus two cosine x minus two sine of x. That's a derivative. And now we'll put the zero in there. Zero equals, okay, that'll be zero, and cosine of zero is one, minus two times sine of zero is zero. So that's going to be, let's see, can I be seen here? That's going to end up being two. Okay, therefore, this will be one over two for our final answer. Let me see, oh, I'm sorry, that's a three, I think. Oh, that should have been a three. Let's change that to a three here. So three times one, and that'll be a three. So this should be a three. So one third.